again on its breakfast live on GTV. We are talking cyber security awareness and two gentlemen are at the table to help us understand all the basis for multi-stakeholder engagement for effective collaborations and partnerships for the country's cyber security development. And it is Ghana's Cyber Security Act 2022 Act 1038 that makes this possible and it has provisions like the one in section 13 which establishes a joint cyber security committee comprising heads of public institutions to develop cyber security and talk about cyber security issues so effectively to effectively implement the act the cyber security authority seeks to leverage on the 2022 edition of the annual Cyber Security Awareness Month to raise awareness and build capacity on this important development through the theme Regulating Cyber Security, a Public Private Sector Collaborative Approach. And as I said, two gentlemen have joined me at the table Isaac Socrates Mensa, Deputy Manager, National Computer Emergency Response Team with the Cyber Security Authority. Isaac, welcome. Thank you very much. And he's here with his good friend Joseph Entriato who is also an officer of the National Computer Emergency Response Team at the Cyber Security Authority. Isaac, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for joining us for this conversation. Why is it important, do you think, that we, we highlight issues about cyber security? Social media has become a big thing, but with that comes challenges with keeping safe while online. Yeah. How serious would you say our situation as a country is? Um, Ghana is a heavy user of the internet. Um, currently speaking, statistics indicate that uh, more than 50% of our population is online. And with regards to social media, I, I like the angle from which you came with. We have very heavy users of social media. Uh, recent statistics also indicate that Ghana is number three with regards to time spent on social media worldwide. So Ghana is quite um, a strong user or a heavy user of social media and it's like you rightly said, it comes with its uh, advantages and disadvantages. As in the time that we use on social media, what we do there, uh, we tell if we are at an advantage or we are being um, disadvantaged. But it's very important for us. person inside the system once I come in as you I'm good to go so the human factor is very important that is why we need to build awareness on that so in explaining cyber security you're saying that it's not enough to just highlight the the, the technical parts of it but we also have to address the social exactly. the social issues yeah. when when you as, as a cyber security authority I'm sure that you've studied some statistics are going to be more knowledgeable about some of these things because um, with, with the, the space of, of social media and the internet, 
also comes the risks attached to it. Yeah. Are Ghanaians aware and are they implementing measures necessary to keep themselves safe while online? From your perspective as, as, as um, mm. CSA. Well, um, from the perspective of the CSA, I wouldn't say it. Um, we are too much in the know, or citizens are too much in the know in terms of what to do security-wise. Uh, because when you study the incidents that come to us, uh, we work with the computer emergency response team, so we are responsible for responding to incidents that come to us and through the point of contact. The incidents that come to us, most of them, about 90%, are not technological. So, for example, it's not hacking. Yes. No one has been hacked in most of the cases. Even if it is hacking, mm -hmm. the way in which it was hacked was through um, the human element. You understand? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of uh, account uh, takeovers these days that we mm -hmm. are receiving. Today, your WhatsApp account has mm -hmm. been taken over and all that. These people are people that have put in place two factor authentication. They've put in place all the security measures, but are still. I've still been compromised. It is because we are using human, they are using the human element mm. to hack the system. So someone will call you and you say, I'm a school student of yours, and we are trying to create a group, a WhatsApp group. Uh, some digits have been sent to your uh, you've message. Mm -hmm. You've received a message with some six digits. Could you please mention it for me so that I can add you to the group? He has compromised you. That was your two-factor authenticator. That was sent to you for you to know what you're trying to assess your account. Once you give it to him, he has it. So basically all the things or incidents that are coming to us are basically social engineering. Mm -hmm. They are using these ways to do that. So let me just take you back. When in 2017, the then Ministry of Communications um, conducted a study with the Oxford University and in collaboration with the World Bank, the study was on our cyber screen maturity. One of the high, or the, one of the key highlights, okay, with to that study was our lack of awareness. Because of that, uh, in 2018, the during the National Cyber Security Awareness Month, the launch, the Vice President, Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia, His Excellency, launched what we call the Safer Digital Ghana campaign. It's a five-year campaign that was going to we are going to use to bridge the awareness gap because it was very true. The study came out that we had Ghanaians had a trusting nature. We tend to, we seem to trust anything we see. So we just take it and then someone says you you've won a lottery. A lottery it. that you, you, you didn't entered. enter and then believe it and then you follow the process and then you get compromised. Because there's a price at the end. Exactly. But you never uh, in the first place even enter anything. Mm. So it should tell you, but we do trust it that we've, we are actually going to win something. So the awareness gap was is very high. The lack of awareness is very high in the country. There's quite a lot to be done. And, and that's where um, Cyber Security Authority comes in. Yes. So in, in effect, what, what's your mandate? And mm -hmm. how does that connect, or how does that connect directly to the people on the ground when it comes to the month, which is October, also happened to be Pinktober? It's the, the necessary knowledge in the minds of people when it comes to using the internet mm -hmm. and online spaces safely. Yeah, so the Cyber Security Authority has quite a very big mandate. When you go to Section 2 of the Cyber Security Act, that is what establishes the authority, and that's where we get our powers from. It outlines the basic things or the uh, mandate of the authority. One of them is, of course, awareness creation and also regulating the cyber security um, um, space. So, yes, awareness creation is one of the so, um, objects of the act. You go to or objects of the authority, Section 3 of the Act F, create awareness of cyber security matters. It is one of the mandates of the Cyber Security Authority, and we've been working uh, also assiduously towards that. And you believe that if people know what to look out for, they are better equipped to deal with it before it becomes a problem. Exactly. I'll, I'll bring um, your colleague Joseph into the conversation. He has this fascinating thing behind him, and I wonder what it's all about. There's somebody, yeah. I think that's the e person. When I was <laughs> a kid, they would call that person the killer. So that, that's the killer over there, I bet. And all the good people, the blue people are on the other side. And what are we looking at, Joseph? Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how fishing attacks uh, take place. Fishing, but yes, not, not the one 
to in the city. This is when no, 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 no. Um, someone sent you um, an, an email from what yes. I've read, and they say, oh, you need to enter, explain that exactly. in layman's terms. Yes. Uh, so, fishing is a type of social engineering attack. You see, um, when we say social engineering attack, it's uh, an attack that targets humans instead of system, right? So, they, they, they will target the human in order for the human to do some actions so that they can have access to a system or even to gather information. And phishing is a type of what? Social engineering. So, uh, with regards to phishing, I'm going to use this to demonstrate okay. what goes on. Okay. So, this is the malicious actor. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, this malicious actor will send a fraudulent email. Right? Mm -hmm. So, the actor has a target, a specific target. This is a general type of phishing, right? Specific target. So when this email is sent to these targets, at least some of them will open the email. Then if the email contains links in them, they will click them, right? So when they click these uh, emails, they might be directed to a website, right? So assuming the email contained a link that redirect them to Facebook. This website will have the Facebook login. So you, the victim, you'll be thinking that this is the genuine Facebook what, interface. But the thing going on is that the attacker is hosting this fake uh, website. So when the victim enters the credentials, your username and your password, it goes back to the malicious actor, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, the malicious actor uses the credentials that he has harvested mm -hmm. and now goes on to the original site to enter your uh, details and he will take over uh, your account, yeah. right? So um, one of the goal of phishing attacks is to harvest credentials. Mm -hmm. Another goal is to introduce more ways Malware are the, the, the evil virus. Yes, malicious okay. uh, uh, softwares. Mm -hmm. So viruses, Trojans, etc. Right? So w in this case, when he sends the uh, email, mm -hmm. an attachment may be part in terms of files, maybe staff increments in salary. That is very enticing, you know, <laughs> with an Excel sheet and all that. So when you click on it mm -hmm. or when you download it, then behind the scenes, the malware will be triggered and the hacker can be in your what? In your system, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So the first procedure, number one, is to send the uh, fraudulent email. Or, so, um, yes, the fraudulent email. Then the victim clicks it, redirect them to a fake website. They enter their details. Then the credentials goes back to the hacker. Then the hacker takes advantage yeah. of that is there somewhere in this process from from one while we see the apps, that the the user can identify or is there something you need to look out for to say no this there's something fishy about this okay so the yeah. next if you can go to the next okay so you're going to show us how yes, we identify. can identify some of these phishing attacks and then sure. we can avoid them completely. Then. So back at the screen, Joseph, tell us what's, what's going right. on there. Sure. So this is a sample of a phishing email, right? Okay. This is an email that was sent by a malicious actor. So there are some things you can look out for as a user, right? Now, when you look at the subject or the heading mm -hmm. there, that is the sender email address. Mm. You can see that the domain here is on Microsoft.com, not Microsoft. Mm. On Microsoft.com. So that this is a clue, right? That's, it's not from Microsoft, but probably the email has been what spoofed, right? Spoofed means. Okay, so let's say um, Facebook.com, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we, we know it is F-A-C-E, then book. So in this case, maybe the 
malicious actor instead of the E, he will put in the the one the French one the E with the accent mm -hmm. on it, right? Mm -hmm. So you see it as Facebook, but he has changed the character. It's a of slight the, change. Yes. Okay. So spoof email is like a changed email that is um, purporting to come from a trusted brand, mm. right? So this one, the on here makes it a spoof what email address, right? Then also when there are attachments, when there are attachments and you are not expecting <laughs> far from such an individual, there's a possibility that it contains a virus. You have to be careful. You are not expecting that from that individual who sent it, right? So there's a possibility that it contains a, a, a virus. I also, uh, there's a way of checking if the file really contains a virus. There's a website called virustotal.com. Virustotal.com, yes. If you can upload the file there, then they have um, antivirus engines. That will check if it's a virus, it will pop Even up. if you haven't downloaded the file, you can upload it somewhere else. Because yeah, that's the danger, isn't it? Download. You have to download the file to be able to upload it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I don't want to go too technical, but there is a way of taking um, a hash from this uh, file. Mm. The hash is a computer string. It's like a signature, right? Then you can also send it to virus total. Then it can do that checks for you mm. without you even downloading uh, the file right. too as well. Let's go through the rest yes. of all. Oh, so, okay. you see the greeting, dear customer, mm -hmm. it's too generic. It's too generic. So, <laughs> uh, they will be specific. Microsoft will be specific. Mention your Maybe dear name. Isaac, right? But dear customer, it means this one is a mass campaign mm. trying to get uh, people, mm -hmm. right? Then, the tone of phishing emails always has some sense of agencies. It requires you to act on something act. immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, you are supposed to sign in your 365 uh, account to pay your invoice, which is due now. Right? So, you are required to take these actions or probably they will delete your account or something. So, in order for you not to get your account taken off, mm -hmm. you might fall for that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, and uh, you also have to look out for poor grammar. Ah, that's always my first telltale sign. If you send something that has bad English, mm. yeah, definitely not, not getting an answer for that. Yeah. So what's included? Poor grammar. Poor grammar. Then if the email contains links, it is advisable to hover your no, Kesa mm -hmm. on the link. Don't click it. When you hover your Kesa on the link, it will reveal the main the actual the actual link, link. Mm -hmm. where it's when you click the link where it will lead you to mm -hmm. so sometimes the the hackers embed the links in so even the ways so it it will not be like this but maybe click here and the here and the here is yes the, the, the so the when you hover the mouse on it it will reveal the the link the real link behind mm -hmm. that Right, and sometimes too, they use U URL shortness, mm. so it will shorten the URL and present it as if it's a genuine link, but mm. it's not. So when so you look at the link, what what is it about the link that should let you know not to click it? Let's assume that you are hovering your mouse over it, like you're saying. If you see what, then don't click. What are you looking to see? Okay, that's a good one. So you see. We have HTTP. Mm -hmm. Normally, HTTP means the connection is not secure. So when you open this and you go to the website, whatever details you enter there is not secure. Okay. It means someone sitting somewhere can intercept it and get your credentials. HTTP. Yes. Yeah. So normally, it's supposed to be HTTPS. So if it has an S, you're good to it, go. It's secure. If it's it has an time. S, it means that when you enter credentials there, nobody can intercept it, right? Nobody can intercept it. But that, that does not really, really make it 
uh, safe. Right? Now, look at this link. Sys.160.154.156. This is an IP address. It is not... Normally, we have domains. So, Google.com. There's an IP address behind Google, right? But we don't input the IP the address. Numbers. It is the domain names that we use. Okay. Right? So, when you see this IP address straight away, it, it's an indication that it is malicious. Right. Yeah. Joseph, thank you for sharing those insights with us. So, it is stuff like this, really, um, Isaac, that yeah. you... you Ghanaians exactly. about. So beyond this, what else do you do in Cyber, cyber Security Week? The, there is quite a lot with regards to the Cyber Security Month. It's actually a month from 1st to 31st. Okay. We, aside awareness creation, we engage various stakeholders who matter in the cyber security industry on various um, actions or various activities. This year, for instance, we are engaging them on regulations. The Cyber Security Act was passed in 2020. The authority came into being in 2021. And in 2023, going forward, we are looking to exercise the regulatory powers of the authority. Now, before we even do that, we need to engage those who are going to be affected by those regulations. So if you look at this year's Awareness Month, the theme tells a lot. A private public a public private sector collaborative approach so we are going to engage various stakeholders within the cyber space on the regulatory regimes that we have in the act we are going to engage them for input as to how best we can uh, roll out the regulatory uh, 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 activities within the act we are going to seek input we are going to have quite a lot of activities with mm -hmm. regards to that as we are speaking, we are engaging uh, stakeholder persons on um, the accreditation of um, what do we call them? It's accreditation of accreditation of service providers and okay. accreditation of professionals. Cyber security space. There's a framework that is coming up, and we are engaging stakeholder groups for them to make okay. input. In that way, we are not going to come with a sledgehammer that we are the regulator and this is what is expected of you. We are developing it together so that we can achieve compliance with regards to that. Another important thing is specified in Section 35 to 40 of the Act, that is the protection of critical information infrastructure. These are systems or networks that should they go down, or it's going to affect the social well-being or the economy of Ghana. So we are looking engage for them to so last year for instance the minister for communications and digitalization designated 13 sectors as critical information infrastructure we have started engagement with the various institutions for within these sectors for them to there was a directive also that was launched the directive is a baseline one that is that seeks to in place the measures that are going to protect this infrastructure so we have started engagement with these institutions to look at how best and get them up to those maturity levels so that they can be able to protect their, their infrastructure so that once those infrastructures are hit, it affects the country. So we are engaging these people and um, as part of the award NAXAM this year, that. another thing is also the computer emergency response team development also. That one is the CII or the 35 to 40 is more of a proactive approach in protecting them. Now, what happens if they are hit? That is where the computer emergency response teams also come in. Mm. They are responsible for a response. So we need to also ensure that these kind of uh, um, setups are also up. So we have the national and we have the sectoral ones. So we have the sectoral computer emergency response team, some sitting within the telecommunication sector. They sit at the NCA. We have the government sectoral computer emergency response team that sits with uh, National Information Technology Agency. There's also one with um, the financial sector that sits with the Bank of Ghana. So all these are activities that are ongoing to ensure that uh, our ecosystem is safe and we are engaging people working within these spaces to, to ensure regulate. And Joseph, you have, you have more to share with us. So what's Joseph about to teach us? You yeah. can move to our, our interactive screen here. Um, yeah. What are you going to explain to us next? Okay, so um, for users to always uh, check if 
they are safe out, out there, mm -hmm. or even organizations, right? Um, you, you need to check if you're, you've been involved in any data breach or leak, okay. right? Yeah. So there's an online tool, which is called Have I Been Pound? Have I Been Pound dot com, right? So this tool takes in email addresses or phone numbers to check with leaked uh, databases yeah, so to see if you've been involved in uh, any leak. Yeah, right? so what we are trying to do here is that normally when the hackers breach your network mm -hmm. or they take over your account, they, when they breach the network, they, have, they take in charge of sensitive information. Okay, so let's say they breach GTV. They are going to take all usernames and passwords of various systems and all that. Once they do that, they go to the dark web and sell them or they release them for people to have access to so that they can also use for other things. Now, this site is there and it checks for all those. So once you input your email or phone number, it goes there to check if any of the credentials that you entered is, have has been, been sold on the dark web. On yes. the dark web, yes, so that you know what to do. I'm doing that right after the show. So, so give I'm going example. to do a demonstration okay. with an account with this specifically for, 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 for this. So sometimes it's not even, maybe you've used, you've registered Gmail, right? You have your Gmail uh, account there. And you are registering other services which require your Gmail account. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not the Gmail itself that has been leaked, but those, those are the ones you services that you Gmail use, for. yes. Those are linked. So we should. So I'll try and input an email in and see. Okay, so um, can I bring this up here. Okay. okay, so as we can see, this email has been found before, so it means it has been involved in a, a data breach. Okay, right? Does so, it tell you exactly what kind of, of breach yes. it is? Yes, so it will give you the service. So, Canva. Uh, Canva. So, so account was used in registering on this particular um, platform. Platform. So it means that the email I did input, it was used in a registration process on Canva on the Canva platform, mm -hmm. right? So uh, malicious actors or hackers got hold of the Canva database, right? In which the email and the password were all involved. So it has been sold. It is out there. Right, so for users, when you do this and you see that that has happened, that has happened, you have to go to Canva, then quickly change credentials, your credentials over there. But what if you are not on Canva? So, if for example, I find that my account has been used to create another account in let's say a pornographic site, and I've never used, I've, I've never subscribed to the website, how do I go to that website and log in with my details? and say they should take me off or, or remove me or, or whatever. Can I get a question again? I'm saying that someone has maybe gotten hold of my, my details yes, yes. and they've used it to log into a certain website that I'm not aware of. Let's assume that that website does that child pornography or, or human mm -hmm. trafficking. Mm -hmm. If I've never been on the site, if I've never logged in, how do I get too. my details deleted or how do I not become part of that community that I may not have wanted to be part of in the first okay. place? So in that scenario, I can confidently say that you've been involved in two <laughs> breaches because when you use your password, the, the uh, malicious actor who used your credentials in registering that site, right? They will send a verification email to your uh, My mail email. Mm -hmm. So how did he verify? It means he has credentials to your main email. email. So he, he went a ahead and verified from there. So it, you have been involved in even two things that maybe 
you know, your main email account mm -hmm. has also been compromised. Compromised. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm absolutely dumbfounded because you can be sitting there and your details may have been used to log into all these other sites and you may not even be exactly. aware of it. Exactly. Is, are you able to, to get these, to get yourself off these platforms if you do find out that that has happened to you? Uh, yes. So, um, first of all, in this scenario that you, you, you created, mm -hmm. right, if you still have access to maybe your Gmail, the main account, you, can unsubscribe? you, you, have, no, you can change your credentials to the new password that maybe the malicious actor That's doesn't know. Okay. Then you go ahead to the new services, right? Then you go maybe delete account. Mm -hmm. They will send verification to your main account. Then you confirm that you want to delete this account. Then you are off. Yeah. Joseph, thank you <laughs> for your demonstrations. I think everyone should get on that site. Um, I have been pond.com. Enter an email or a phone number and find out if that email or a phone number has been sold off by evil, evil internet users to um, a, a dark web somewhere they're using it for some malicious activities is it possible isaac to yeah. for people to protect their private stuff whilst using the internet and whilst we are at it what's the regulation really for 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 the cyberspace considering people have to volunteer information are you able to regulate people's volunteerism because they they choose to put information or stuff about themselves out there are you able to regulate that? Unfortunately, not. You see, um, cybersecurity is a shared responsibility. The cybersecurity authority is a regulator and is going to create the regulatory environment to ensure that you are safe. But you as a user also has a great responsibility in ensuring that uh, your details are not out there. So before, that's why there's a need for awareness. Before you enter anything into any website, your details into any web, do you really need it? It's one thing that you need to ask. Sometimes you are doing research or something, you go onto the website, before you get it, you need to input your, you need to give them information before. The question is, do I need to do that? Do I really need the information? Because, you see, because of lack of awareness, sometimes because we need it so badly, we don't really care what we give out. Yeah, because we just type, okay, I agree. Example, and then, and then exactly. Example, when you, uh, when you download an application online, it asks you, I want access to your gallery. Yeah, you yeah, say yeah. yes. I want access to your microphone. Yeah. You say yes. But that is where you pause to check. Does this application really need access to my microphone? Mm. Before you even accept it. But we don't. And at that point in time, when you are taking or are making that decision, I'm not there. The cybersecurity authority is not there. It is your decision. You understand? So it is a shared responsibility. You also need to do your part for in, a, in order for us to keep you safe. Isaac, thank you so much for sharing oh. time. I, I, I'm sure that because people are um, what do I, responsible for their own safety, yeah, sure. even yeah. on the online space, expected to put certain uh, behavioral changes in place exactly. so that we can all enjoy enjoy this the space created in the cyber world what would be our takeaway from this conversation um cyber security awareness month all the activities how can people take part how can we ensure that we are safe on on, on when we use cyber spaces yeah so uh, for the awareness month there are several um activities that are scheduled to happen within the month I wouldn't want to run through them because of time, but you can go to NACSAM, that is N-C-S-A-M dot C-S-A dot gov dot G-H. And you see all the events that have been scheduled for the month of October. We have some that are in hybrid mode where you can have links to view them online. And the others to that are specific to stakeholder groups. Uh, my takeaway would be that, um, in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our use of the internet, we are we should be very careful and also do due diligence in our activities. Our passwords. Once your password can be found in a it takes a second to hack. 
you should ensure that you create strong passwords using caps, um, numbers, I mean a mix of everything, symbols and everything. Public Wi-Fi, we should try as much as possible to stay away from them. We always like free stuff. Mm -hmm. Once you log into them, there might be someone who is malicious and will be able to detect everything that you send across that network. The last thing is also, well, when you take this act, there's one thing in there that talks about the protection of children. Now, we buy handsets, we buy uh, various devices for our kids, and we do not monitor what they do on these devices. It is very important that once we give them these devices, we take time to monitor what they do. Because they are involved, I mean, talking to a whole lot of people. We should be very careful of that. And also, the last thing, whatever you post, you should be, you should think twice about it. Think twice. It's a good yes. place it to just stop. just hit Kiddy these days, recently. He, was, he has been begging for some time and he's been trending because of certain posts he made some time back. People are pulling them back and are hitting him with it. Allegedly. The internet never Allegedly. forgets. Allegedly. Sure. Thank you. The internet never forgets. Thank you. Isaac Socrates Mensa is Deputy Manager, National Computer Emergency Response Team with the Cyber Security Authority. Him and his colleague Joseph Intriato, who is an officer of the National Computer Emergency Response Team, also with the Cyber Security Authority, have been sitting with us to look into uh, cyber security laws in the country and how we can keep ourselves safe from the online space. Um, the website is I Have I Been. You should check that out. Enter your email or your phone number in order to find out if you've been logged into some weird things that you want to take yourselves out of. Um, NCSAM, which is the National Cyber Security Authority uh, website, is where you should go. NCSAM.csa.gov.gh. You can log into that website to find out all the details about the activities earmarked for Cyber Security Awareness Month, which is this month of October, which is also Pinktober, where we highlight all issues about breast cancer and breast care. It's live on GTV, and this is The Breakfast Show. Remember, you can watch all this all over again on our handles, GTV Ghana. You can have yourself informed. In our next segment, we'll delve into another issue of very significant importance to women, and it's to do with their hair, the crown. I think your hair is natural, more so you need this information after the break.